Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. And it's a rainy night in San Jose, California. And what do Sean and I do on rainy nights in San Jose, California? We do sick mods at the Toyota Time Studios. So what are we gonna do today? Well, this is my new used third gen 4Runner. Picked it up on New Year's Eve. Finally found a decently priced third gen with low miles and I've been looking for a second one for a long time, over a year, and I finally came upon this one. It's a 98, 131,000 miles, four wheel drive, limited with an e-locker. E-locker, we like e-lockers. And it was pretty well taken care of. It literally was driven by an old lady at one point. Uh, she didn't need any more, she bought a Prius and I was lucky to get to the ad first and got the deal. One of the first things I want to do is I want to replace my steering wheel. The steering wheel is super ratty. I mean, it's like rattier than ratty. And because my partner in crime, Sean, is a professional picker at pick and pull, he picked up a pretty decent replacement steering wheel from another limited. It's not perfect, but it's a huge step above the one I have. To start off, we'll show you the difference between my current steering wheel and the one that Sean picked up for me at the pick and pull. And you're gonna see it. it's a pretty big difference. Okay, let's go to the vehicle. This is the current one. You can see, I don't know if the previous owners has had really sweaty palms or something or toxic sweat, but I mean, it is just eaten up. It's worst like right at the 12 o'clock position when you're going straight down the road. It's really eaten up. Sean didn't want to let me drive with the steering wheel that bad. So he got me this one and it's in a lot better shape. You can see it's got a little scuff mark on the top right here. It's like a black scuff mark. I mean, it's not perfect, but is it a lot better than my old one? Yeah, it's a hell of a lot better than my old ones. We're going to show you how to pull the steering wheel and replace it or for whatever reason you need to pull the steering wheel, we're gonna show you how to do it and do it safely. We're gonna to go to the factory service manual and show you the related pages we're gonna use. Okay, so here's the page in the factory service manual we're gonna use. It's in the steering section and it's page SR12 and it walks you through the steps. It says, place the front wheels facing straight ahead. You remove the two steering wheel lower number two covers. They're little plastic covers on the sides and then you get in with a Torx head tool and you loosen the two screws on opposite sides. That allows you then to pull the steering wheel pad out which houses the airbag. And then you disconnect the airbag connector and then the next step is you remove the steering wheel set nut and then you place match marks on the steering wheel and the main shaft so you can get it back in the exact same spot. And then it lets you know to use a puller. Once you get the steering wheel free, you disconnect the connector and the sucker is out. What we're gonna do different than what the factory service manual specifies is we're gonna do two additional steps. The first additional step is we're gonna disconnect the negative cable to the battery and we're gonna let the vehicle sit for 15 minutes before we do anything. The reason to disconnect power to the vehicle and to let it sit is that the airbags are kind of a dangerous thing to work around. The airbags, when they go off, explode at a speed of 200 miles per hour. And if that thing hits you in the right way, it could ruin your day or pretty much actually kill you. This concern is more of a situation for firefighters like I am where we're working on a car that's been in an accident and maybe some of the airbags haven't gone off. So we go through the procedure of disconnecting the power to the vehicle and letting it de-energize so we don't have to worry about an airbag exploding unexpectedly and hurting someone. We're just gonna do that as an additional step even though it might be unnecessary because it's better to be safe and sorry. The other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna lock the steering wheel. Sean, through experience, has been able to take off the steering wheel with brute force just by grabbing the steering wheel and pulling really hard and he can get it free without a puller. What the locking is actually gonna do for us because we're gonna use a puller, locking the steering wheel is just gonna actually keep the steering wheel firmly in place. We're gonna use painter's tape and a pen to mark where the steering wheel currently sits and then we know because the steering wheel is locked nothing's going to change so we can get the replacement steering wheel in the exact same spot so we're going to get started now on removing the steering wheel first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove these little plastic tabs right here 
This is the little plastic tabs, one on this side and one on the opposite side that you have to take off the little hatch and then you can get at the Torx head screw that holds the steering wheel pad in place. Choose your tool of choice. I'm just gonna use a small screwdriver. It's not very big. It's gonna fit into this little groove right here and just do it gently because this thing's gonna go flying and then you're not gonna find it. So just be gentle and pry it into your hand and then put it in a place you're not gonna lose it. And then we gotta do the same with the opposite side. Because it's gonna be easier to show you where these Torx head bolts are inside the steering wheel, we're using the one we're gonna be putting in. Right here, this is the bolt and this is the little access hatch that we just pulled off. This is on the driver side and then this is on the passenger side right here. This is the bolt, right? there sticking out the little hatch for the side that faces the passenger side is like right near the cruise control switch this torx head bolt is a size 30 so it's a t30 torx head bolt wasn't that tight if you can see, the bolts kind of jut back towards the actual airbag. So they're kind of at an angle. You're not going directly perpendicular in, but you're kind of going from the back forward to get on the head. It's not a direct shot. Okay, so both of the Torx head bolts are loose. Now I'm just gonna pull this back. You gotta wiggle it. And there we go. And now, we have to disconnect the connector, which is right here. So you see this little white tab right here? It looks like you just slide it this way. And that's it, it's disconnected. Let's go back to the book. They show you a certain way to put this on the ground. So you see how they say there's correct and wrong. The reason why that's wrong is because if the airbag decided to deploy, it's gonna deploy into the ground or whatever surface it's on a bench and it's gonna be a projectile going up. If it's facing up, it's just gonna shoot out the distance that the airbag normally shoots out and that's it. So it's not gonna become a projectile. So that's why they're showing you the way you should put it on a surface with the Toyota logo facing up. This is the connector for your cruise control and you see right here, this is the tab. There's a little hook right here that you have to depress to push it in. So I think I'm just going to use this little plastic tool to push up because it's kind of hard to get your hand in there. So if you see right here, there's not a lot of room to get your thumb or something. So I'm going to push up with this. You could probably do it with a screwdriver. So I'm going to push up and then pull back. That was easy, it didn't take a whole lot. So you can do it with a screwdriver, some type of plastic tool, whatever you want. So now the cruise control is disconnected. Remember the factory service manual says, just have the steering wheel straight. Doesn't say anything about locking it. And then we're gonna get this nut off and then we're gonna make match marks. And that's what you would do if you were gonna be trying to get your steering wheel off and the same steering wheel back on. But we're actually swapping a steering wheel. so. Doing match marks on this actual steering wheel doesn't do us any good. So we have to have an alternative way of marking it to where we can get the new steering wheel in the position of this steering wheel. So we're choosing to lock it. Now locking it is gonna help us get the replacement steering wheel in the same spot. And it would also help you in the case where you don't own a puller. Sean's not like Lou Ferrigno or Arnold Schwarzenegger, and he's able to pull this thing off with brute force, and so you can do the same. By locking the steering wheel, it gives you a more firm platform to be able to pull back and break it free of the splines. We're gonna do it more for the fact that we wanna get it back in the right position, so we're gonna turn it and lock it. It's locked. The next step we're gonna do is we're gonna put a couple pieces of painter's tape right here, and then we're gonna draw the outline of this curvature onto the painter's tape. So when we get the new steering wheel in, we could basically match it up the curvature of the steering wheel with the line that we made on the painter's tape. Any old painter's tape, you don't have to use this thickness. You could use the thicker stuff, but I'm gonna put a couple different strips of this length. So kind of get it underneath there. Now you grab yourself a pen, just kind of like you're tracing something and trace the outline of the steering wheel. We have a line to follow now. 
This steering wheel set nut is a 19 millimeter. So I'm just using a deep socket with a short extension with my flexible head 3H drive. And I'll try to break this loose. Okay, so I'm noticing that it wants to turn. I don't know necessarily I want to put all that strain on the locking mechanism. I don't think that's good. So how do you do that? I have impact guns and I can make this easy, but I'm trying to show you the way with conventional tools because many of you aren't gonna own an impact gun. It's usually nice to hold with two hands with a ratchet and socket combo, but I'm gonna actually just hold it with one hand. I'm gonna hold counter pressure with my left hand and operate with my right to break it free. Cause I just was concerned that I was gonna put a lot of strain on the locking mechanism. So that worked just fine. Holding with one hand on the steering wheel and breaking it free with the other with the tool. And now that's off. A 19 millimeter flange nut. Here's where the factory service manual is talking about doing match marks. If you made a match mark on the actual steering wheel and then you matched it up to the shaft, then you'd be able to get it in the same orientation. You carry a mark to here and then onto the threads and that's how you would mark it. But since we're not reusing the steering wheel, we're gonna chuck this. We're not gonna even bother doing match marks, but we wanted to mention that in case you were pulling this off for another reason other than switching steering wheels. Here's the step where you either use brute force like Sean has done at the pick and pull and pulling back really hard and wiggling it and finally getting that thing and hopefully not do it where you pull it right into your face and ruin your grill. We're gonna use a puller because we have a puller and we're gonna use the same style puller if you watched our timing belt video, it's the same puller we used to get the harmonic balancer, also known as the crank pulley, off the engine. We lucked out these bolt holes are the same size and thread pitch as the harmonic balancer. They're an M8 bolt with a 125 pitch. And because we did the timing belt job, we have two bolts that we can use. This puller kit is from the OTC company. It's a bearing separator, push puller set is what they call it. And the number is 4518. When you open it up, mainly the reason why I bought this kit is for the bearing splitters. There's a smaller bearing splitter and there's a bigger bearing splitter. And I've used these for the rear axle seal job that we have a couple videos for. The things we're gonna use out of this kit is I'm gonna use this puller tool and then I'm gonna use it in conjunction with a couple M8 bolts. These are M8 bolt with a 125 pitch and I got a few washers to go with it. I've got four flat washers that fit the M8 bolt. And so now we'll go to the vehicle, we'll show you how we're gonna set it up. This is just a two attachment type of puller. They also make harmonic balancer pullers and steering wheel pullers that are like a, a tri thing. It almost looks like a clover. And those are pretty common. You can rent them at auto parts stores or you can buy your own. This thing right here is gonna drive against the actual shaft for the steering wheel. We need something to capture the steering wheel with and we got these bolts. So we're gonna thread them in and basically thread them in pretty far to where we've got a lot of threads capturing the steering wheel. As many threads capturing as possible so the threads won't give way and pull out. Now it's a matter of tightening this screw to where it tightens up against the shaft of the steering wheel. Now I just have to grab the right size socket or open end wrench and tighten this screw to where it's gonna put pressure on this. These bolts are gonna be drawing the steering wheel off the splines of the shaft. Okay, so we have the spindle of the puller firmly resting up against the shaft of the steering wheel. And we're just gonna apply a little force. And that was it, that was quick. Didn't take much but it came with a little bit of a jolt. So we're gonna get our puller out of the way and we should be able just to pull the steering wheel right off. Boom, goes the dynamite. So now we have it off and you can get a look at what it looks like in there with the steering wheel off. Nothing too exciting, but something you don't see every day, I guess, on your third gen 4Runner. Now we got our new used one, the yellow airbag wiring through there. And then now we're looking at the line we made on the painter's tape and matching up this curvature. So that's one spline. I'm gonna go one more spline to the right. And that's gotta be it right there. So that was the whole point of the painter's tape. So we know we got the steering wheel in the exact same spot. 
because if I went one spline over this way, look how much it's off. You really almost have to try to mess that up. So I'm going to turn it back again to one spline and that's got to be it. So we know we're in the right spot. We're going to get our set nut back connected and then we're going to torque this to spec. The torque value for this set nut is 25 foot pounds, 25 foot pounds. And I know people out there in torque land are going to give me crap about having an extension, but you kind of need an extension and I'm not going to account for it. That's 25 foot pounds or close. Technically with a, an extension, it throws off your torque values. Do you have to worry about it in this application? Not really. I mean, you don't want your steering wheel falling off. So if, if the torque spec is a little bit off from 25 foot pounds, I think I'll be okay. It's on there tight. Now I'm gonna plug in the power clip for the cruise control. I think we'll unlock the steering wheel so it'll be easier to get at the nuts. When the steering wheels in this orientation, it'll be easier with the torques to get them tightened up. So I'm just going to put the key in the ignition and unlock it and then turn it straighter. So now we can get at these Torx bolts a little bit easier than this fashion up and down. If you haven't done so already, you now have to take the little plastic round hatches off so you can get at these Torx bolts. So I'm going to get these out of my way. We have our little plastic hatches on the side out of our way. We're going to connect up the electrical connector to the airbag so it slides in like so snaps in place always good to pull back a little bit make sure it's firmly in there so you don't have to retake it apart of it it's not solid so now we have to tilt this into position it looks like this wire here just kind of finds its own home hopefully and that looks like it's already in place i actually didn't have it quite fully seated i wiggled it a little more and you can tell when everything kind of the the grooves line up with the airbag and the actual steering wheel it lines up nice that's kind of when you know you're good so now i'm going to use a short extension with the t30 size torx head socket and i'm going to just tighten them hand tight first and that one's hand tight and that one's tight the torque value for the torx head bolts that hold the steering pad or the airbag to the steering wheel the torque spec is 78 inch pounds 78 inch pounds not foot pounds 78 inch pounds that's it i'll get the other side because the job wouldn't be complete without these little protective covers let's put them back in so there's not a hole there to look at so pop those suckers in to their home Go to your home. Go to your home. That's your home. Are you too good All right. for your home? Now we can remove our painter's tape. And now let's look at the result. We have a new used steering wheel from another limited forerunner that Sean got for me. Nice guy that he is. You can compare it to the ratty one I had. So big improvement. I'm happy. Thank you, Sean. We did a test drive and the cruise control wasn't working, which was troubling. We looked back in the factory service manual and it talks about this clock spring. The directions say, turn it counterclockwise till there's resistance and then turn it back clockwise two and a half turns. So the steering wheel is now straight where the wheels are straight forward. If you go from center and you go two and a half turns, so that's a half turn, that's one, another half turn that's two two and a half turns the clock spring starts to get a little bit stiff so then you go back around another two and a half turns and you should be centered so you go half one half two two and a half and then you see these the arrow here it's kind of hard to see it's easy to see here but it's not so easy to see there there's an actual little black arrow cut out and those two line up. So when you have it in the right orientation, you should be able to turn it two and a half turns to the right and two and a half turns to the left. But that's not our problem with the cruise control. We took a closer examination of the steering wheels. This is my old one. 
and you can see there's four wires that are part of the cruise control switch. When you look at the one that Sean got me from the pick and pull, for some reason it's only got three wires and it's not working correctly to operate the cruise control. But we're gonna swap the controls for the cruise control. I'm gonna remove this thing out of the way so I can get out these Phillips head screws. So there's one here and then there's one back here. Once we get this out of the way, you'll be able to see it easier. And there's another one right here. So there's three of them. So we're gonna get this thing out of the way first and this takes a five millimeter Allen. So I'm just gonna use a five millimeter socket. So I just got a little quarter inch drive with an extension. This is a kind of a unique thing. There's two pieces of metal and there's a kind of a spring thing sandwiched between them. So you see it's got a little bit of a spring to it. So I'm just gonna back these out all the way. This is gonna have to come with it because the harness is attached to that. So I gotta keep these together. So I'll be swapping this over too. And then this just comes out. So I'll just put this aside. Now I can get at the three Phillips head screws that hold the cruise control switch to the steering wheel. So I use my Phillips head screwdriver and back these suckers out. There's one, two, and then the one. Everything goes. Everything goes. Okay, that's the last one. Now fishing this thing through, it looks like this is just kind of like a soft rubber grommet. So how's this thing gonna fish out? It's gotta pull back a little bit, get this out out from underneath here, this little piece went underneath here, and then you can slide it through this way. So going back in, you just slide it in like that and then get it underneath there again like so. That's the way we're gonna go in on the other side. We're gonna swap these pieces over to the other steering wheel. The good one. This is the cruise control switch from my old steering wheel. We've got it out. Again, I'm gonna slide it through this rubber grommet. Now this one has a little bit different than the other steering wheel. This plastic piece right here, you have to push down to get this slid in place. It's got like a little nub here. So I have to pull down with my hand to get it out of the way so I could slide this in place. So now I can get the three screws started. The screws for the new steering wheel that Sean got me have different length screws. These ones came out of my one that was on my vehicle and these shorty ones came out of this steering wheel that the new one or the new used one. So they're different lengths. So I'm gonna use the ones that actually came with the steering wheel. And I just cinch those up snug. Okay, now we have to get this in place. This spring jobber faces up and the metal plates towards the bottom. So you get that underneath. You get these bolts. It's got like a little rubber grommet and a sleeve and then the threaded portion. So you probably have to push down a little bit on that spring, line up the holes. I'm not gonna worry about a torque spec on this. I'm just gonna cinch them up kind of snug with the quarter inch drive. I don't think it's gonna be a big deal. Yep, cruise control comes on. You can see the light coming on. So that was the problem. The wiring on the other steering wheel wasn't the same. It had three wires instead of four wires. So we just swapped the switches and now it works. All right, so we're done with the steering wheel swap. We ran into an unanticipated problem. On the test drive, the cruise control wasn't working and we're thinking like, why wouldn't the cruise control work? We got the electrical connector connected. What could be wrong? We took the steering wheel off. We started messing around with the clock spring. We determined that that was set correctly. And then we started taking a closer look at the wiring for the actual cruise control switch. And we noticed something. This switch that was in the steering wheel that Sean gave me came out of a 2002 Forerunner and mine is a 98. And the difference is, is that this switch is wired with three wires to this harness. In comparison to the one on my 98, it has four wires. For some reason, Toyota changed the wiring harness for the cruise control to the harness to the ECU. They made it a three wire instead of a four wire. So when we tried to plug in this switch and we only had three wires, it wasn't communicating with the ECU. The logical 
fix was just to swap out the cruise control switches. And that's what we did. And we just got done with a test drive and it works. We fixed the problem. So not only did this video show you how to swap steering wheels, also showed you if your cruise control switch went bad, you basically learn how to switch out the cruise control switch. You learn that now. Ultimately, we were successful. Did we run into problems? Yeah, and that's mechanics 101. We didn't anticipate the electrical connections not being compatible. So we got past it, we figured out the fix, and we finished the job. We hope you learned something today. We thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. We'll be back with more videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Take care. Bye-bye.